Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Christian from Berlin and it's done. Yes, by far the most comprehensive and complete tutorial on the Boogie Woogie Stump. 11 full courses. How did I structure it? Well, the most student friendly way, um, in my opinion, is that I play a chorus and then I play the chorus, the same chorus, slowly and then I give instructions in a third bit for each chorus. So, um, also, this tutorial has chapters. If you go to the YouTube timeline on your YouTube player and you can, you can see that you can select each chapter separately, which is another great help for you, I figured. Please leave a like, this way you can reward. The hard work I put in this was a lot and also help this video to become a success and be seen by others in the YouTube universe. Please enjoy. Before we start, <coughs> uh, a word on the original Abbott Emmett left hand. Because I chose a different one for teaching and for you to learn. But the original is this one. Uh, it's a massive left hand, but it's also very, very difficult. I will show it briefly, but for teaching, I chose this one, which is also grooving like hell, but it's much easier for, for, for learning. So. The original Abbott Abbott's left hand goes like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Change and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Two and three and four. Let's go. Let's get started. The first one we love because there is no timing that is rushing you. You can play this quite freely in the beginning. Okay, we have this little uh, rough in the beginning and then we have the sledgehammer. Oh, we love that. So you start, of course, and then you accelerate. The hard bit here is not this one, but going, going here up at tempo. So you must remember, otherwise you get all mixed up. Left note first left, right, and off you go. Same again. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Yeah, again, here's chromatic. Then we go to F, same, little upbeat. And it's wrong, Christian's here. Here, left, right, Left, right, chromatic. Chromatic. You see? It's not that hard intellectually, otherwise I couldn't play it. But at, at tempo, you know, like playing. Yeah, that's a little bit harder then. Remember, left, right, left, right. And you're all set. And then we start.
Let's pause here for a moment. Why? The first chorus is very important because one element is introduced that is characteristic for the entire boogie. It shows up over and over again. It starts uh, when we change to F. Look at my right hand. It's, it comes back identically. E, next, next C, next F, next G, it's always there. Let's have a look because you have to uh, find a finger setting that suits you and repeat that finger setting all the time. The hard moment. Uh, now, here, going from these thirds. And I suggest you this one. Okay, so that's a very important moment. Once you found, found your finger setting, stay with it, stay with it. Otherwise, you do what I would do uh, when I played this at, when I think I played at 135, tempo 135. Uh, already I started getting stressed out and I played, uh, um, I played, involuntarily I played variations. You know, when you, when you look at my fast playing, then you see that uh, I did not practice enough. I did not practice enough. I could rescue it. I have some routine and still sounds the same, but it was not as in the original. Okay, so. And then you speed it up and then you're all set. Practice this one first before we continue. A few words on this one, cause your ears might be starting to sweat a little. We have this uh, beginning here, very important that you start here, and you have this one on G ready, and you practice this. Yay. And then, and then this one. Now comes a tricky bit, the fourth triplets. What is fourth triplets? It's this one. This is the beat. And this is ba 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 ba. And they are hard to play. But since you are ready here to play this complicated boogie, you know how to do it. I give you a little bit of a hint. This is the beat. Ba oh, no, 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 no. Just take a regular metronome. Yeah. 
and so on. Okay, but it does not matter if you play this a little bit freer. If you cannot play thirds, uh, a fourth triplet, then you play like do 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 da da ba. You can you can play it a little bit ad lib if you're not a half god like myself. Shall we move on? The rest is easier. It's it's a variation. Hey, thumbs. Again. Hey, attention. Here. And as I told you, thumb and the almighty ending that you played so often already. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And here we start into the next chorus. And so we're starting in the end. Uh, that's the upbeat for the next thing. And then we go on with the next one. This one is fairly uh, repetitive, but there's a little thing here. So, of course, this is a, is a rough, and in many notations you find it just as an ornamentation, like, like... But, when, where to start? You can start by playing this on the offbeat of the left hand, if you play, if you start slowly. One, and two, and three. Comes, it, it's pulled together later on. Okay, shall we move on? There's more waiting. Oh, there's another of those horror tr tremolo of hell coming.
at this point latest your usual boogie boogie migraine should set in we have a couple of moments we have to discuss first yeah the trill you must manage that um, close by you can play the whole thing as an adornment as an embellishment don't count but now comes one and so we have these five notes on the end Again. And then we have this monster here. Yeah, it's not a monster. It's well, it's a friendly monster. It's a C7 chord. Now what you do, um, I played it now in a rhythmical fashion like, but in the end, you want to either roll it, which is quite hard. And as far as I know, he doesn't do it. He plays also like many of us mortals. You played this one. And then you have the uh, the rest of the block of the kids of the block here, and you play this. If if you drop a note, don't worry, really don't worry. Everybody's dropping notes. You watch the boogie players play this; uh, they all do something, something to make this kind of a a wall of sound. Yeah. Or now we have the same. Repeated. Now comes the wonderful third run. Now look at this. And here, very important, very important uh, finger setting. Now, at least at this point, you know why finger setting has been invented. I do this one. So again, now you come down here and I use this one until the D and the F, and then you go. And then back to the standard German boogie ending. You can use, I mean, uh, I think uh, Albert Emmons even uses. So, two, four, two, four. I'm spitting on my Yamaha, it asked for it, it asked for it. So. Uh, but whatever finger setting you choose, stay with it. I know I repeat myself like a, like a, like a German. Uh, so, and from here, and I do because I can tie this better. I find it is better to target and to aim than. Yeah, it looks great when when Dr. John plays it because he can do it really fast. But and back here. And these are the three installments. Practice this first. Until here, and then you practice the rest. And <laughs> your headache is getting stronger, I can feel it. But also the satisfaction is getting stronger once you manage this. Start very slowly. Welcome to the chorus of doom. Yes, this will make the sweat pour down in floods from your head. Why? High density of tough moments. That's it. Of course, we have in the beginning, you have the, again, the sledgehammer of, uh, of a judgment day. Finger setting now. 
I play this one. I've seen people play this one. Whatever you choose, stay with it. I found this one easier uh, to tie when I play it fast. Now we have the next sledgehammer. And now the octave start. And this is the hard bit. Four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one uh, and yeah yeah you see I made a mistake why I didn't do it because it's anti-intuitive you come one and two and three four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four now high density of difficulties and practice this one it got me stuck for a while. And now the hardest bit. I found this the hardest bit. At tempo, we have octaves. We are on the dominant. This because it will dominate you for another month. And we have this one. Why is it hard? Octave? Okay, but now you have this. Let's call it the eagle's claw. Here, the eagle's claw. Grrr, eagle. And you have to put it in the freezer. Put your hand in the freezer for overnight, overnight, so that it stays, it freezes in this position. And now we go two left, one right, two left, one right, two left, one right, two left, one right, two left, one right. G and from here it goes to our beloved standard model of the universe. So the only thing that is easy about this is the pattern. So it ha the pattern helps. G. This is your cue. Last bar, don't forget it. I slept it over for a couple of times. Uh, is already the up bar, upbeat the up bar, the upbeat for the next chorus. Let's go. Oh, what a relief. <clears throat> this one is very much self-explanatory. I don't have to say uh, almost anything, except I did a little mistake when I played it slow. I fell asleep. <clears throat> like a... It's two bars G. It's two bars G. And I played one of them F. It doesn't matter so much, but no, that you know. And then you can... Yeah. Hey, come on. That's also easy. Huh? Make your wrist loose, like loose like your mind when you had a... A beer. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Christian, that was not really funny anyway. So, okay. Usually this is repeated. Like uh, we, we come. Where, 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 where? Hold on, hold on. Yeah. And now it's repeated. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. So I shorten this because the second time 
it starts already with the next chorus. Okay, so if you want to repeat this, just repeat it and then you go in the end to the next one, which we're going to do now. Another chorus of doom. Well, a little less doom, but still hard. In this one, uh, Albert Ammons is actually playing a very, very tricky left hand. Actually, I cannot play it. Please forgive me. I uh, only practiced this, the whole thing for this tutorial, and this left hand would take me two months plus digging twice a week to get this fluent. And uh, I just cannot shut down my channel for this one. Uh, and it's really hard to play. Uh, so forgive me that I didn't do it. And you wouldn't be happy with it. It's really tough, uh, especially if you don't do gigging with it twice a week. So we continue with the uh, normal left hand and we have the, the doom here is, the tricky bit is we have the frozen eagle's claw again. We need that. It moves parallel. It's the only lick of this thing, of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pep, 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 pep. Yeah. It's parallel movement and it's the only thing we have to do. But. You see? You see how easy it is to slip? Yeah. <laughs> you So there is, there is difficulty doing this at tempo. So please practice it like this. Same tempo as uh, what I played just now. And then get the, the G, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. G. And A. G. And look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit different. And and we go, we go. And next chorus. Now it's getting a little bit harder, if I remember right. <laughs> Not harder. It's getting a little bit, little bit, e little bit easier.
yeah, you have a little uh, you have a little break here. But uh, one little thing, I mean break in the sense that it's uh, it's a bit easier to play. But you see, I play this. I have the feeling that he might have uh, played this here. I gave you the benefit of the doubt, took this slightly easier version here. So we start here, one and two and three and four and one and two. But if you want to be the real Boogie Woogie King, he's probably taking this. I can't swear it, but uh, or can't vouch for it, but it's harder, but that's why you're here. So, um, yeah. Again. Again. And so on. Um, and then, yeah, that's self explanatory. Explanatory. But one comment, when, when you are in the end, you, you know, um, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Don't miss the upbeat for the next chorus, okay? You got it, huh? Want me to play it again? You, you see it also in what... Uh, in my performance. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three. And that's the next chorus already. Okay, I play the upbeat again from the previous chorus, and then we start with the next chorus. Metronome on. One, three, four. Oh. You arrived at the last chorus. Yeah! I mean this. I mean this. As a teacher, if you practiced, uh, you know, correctly, did the right tempo, wonderful. You have my deep respect. Let's have a look. Um, it's a little bit tricky ending he chose, the old master. Um, we are on the dominant, and uh, look at this. It's a uh, one and two and three and four and one. Now A back. And, and now listen to this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mean old bastard. Of course you're a bastard, I'm not insulting a hero. So again, the last line. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. And in this tempo is a very understated ending like. Okay, up to now, please subscribe, you know, putting a lot of uh, different uh, stuff for you on my channel. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. Buy the sheet music. <laughs> This helps me stay this, uh, keep this thing alive. Um, it doesn't matter if you can read sheet music. It really doesn't matter <laughs> as long as you pay. Now, I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope to see you uh, back on my channel for another video. Bye from Berlin.